All right, so welcome to the review. Today's review will be The Godfather for Michaels. Someone would ask, why are there four Michaels? And the answer is, golly gee, I don't know. First Michael was in the first movie. He was your average, typical sort of Michael. And he was also in the second movie too. He did first movie and second movie sort of stuff. Okay, that that's all right. Okay, right. Uh, a bunch of words people say to sort of fill in the blanks. I'll try to fill in the blanks by not doing such sentences. But that's why we're here. We're here because it's uh it's quite important. So I'll crack open a well something imaginary. You can hear the imagination soaring through your head, and uh go to the next uh phase. So I paused it. I restarted it. Because this imagination gave me made me wanna uh, uh, they burp, so I burped. But I did it off the camera. Or on the camera, but on the pause. Back to Michael, uh, Michael uh, Corleone, parts one, two, three, and four. There were four, four Michaels. First one, you, you remember him. He was in the first two movies. Very, um, uh, Al Pacino played him. And, um, he was very good, and one of his one of his last two good movies was uh, *Cruising* and *The Godfather* too. You could think not, it wasn't necessarily that both films were great or anything, but they had really powerful, really powerful Corleone's very powerful acting from from the gentleman, uh, the Pacino. And who knows what kind of mess he's into? Because you know, with the whole the whole people. Um, Putting that tic tac toe board there and um, making the making the nonsense mess, uh, the Loch Ness. You never know what's going on and what's going to happen next. As I know that uh, I don't know that De Niro. He he you know the little co-star or whatever that you know he he didn't let him be. Um, uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't his younger brother Sonny, but he didn't get to be his daddy. And, you know, because remember that De Niro is Pacino's daddy. Or at least he plays it on TV or in the movies. So keep that in mind. I'm actually, I'm actually looking for a light source, but I don't know where it is. Should probably, should probably touch up this area eventually, someday. Eventually, I'd cut this out, but you know it's part of the adventure. Um, we were had a so still got my tree though. There we are. Won't um won't stay uh won't stay let. Ooh, there it is. So anyway, the second uh, second Michael is he's arguably the same the same Michael. He's uh, in the third movie. Uh, ever since he played that one character, you know, the, you know the one based off of that 1935 movie. But they just but you know Oliver Stone was he was trying to get off his um you know hit the right road by writing about absolutely nothing but the wrong road. And taking a taking a classic and uh, spinning it around and around, and he added a bunch of profanity to it, and and in some ways he did a he did um, a lot of homage to it. He gave a he gave a Giorgio Moroder he gave him the soundtrack, which made it you know a rock boom and bass boom and soundtrack to like no other. Because when you think uh, '80s, when you think um, 
when you think something that's like it's like jazz but it's not jazz but it's just one lonesome german guy on a on a on a device you think it's Giorgio Moroder cuz hopefully I'm pr pronouncing his his name right otherwise he'll pop out of the screen with his guitar and beat the crud out of me um uh you know the style but yeah as back to the uh back to the rant uh he um there was no uh, there, there, you know, uh, there, there was no Pacino acting after that. It was kind of just became that character, like it absorbed into him like a transplant. They're like, oh, okay, just just do that, just make that voice and and do that the rest of the way, and and it kind of became like a, a lampoon, a parody of himself, so to speak. It was sort of a no nonsense mess, um, you know, like the Loch Ness monster, but taller. And that she as tall as it could be because it's, you know, it's a big screen. You never know because when you're on a silver screen, a gold screen, a copper screen, a Frankenstein screen, you're just, you're all, you're on top of your world. So that's the second, that's the second Michael. And the third Michael was in the, in the game of the Godfather because he decided he didn't want to, he didn't want to have his character get, um, portrayed in, by EA by by the you know the Godfather franchise so they had somebody else sort of like a stand-in Michael like just a new brand new Michael you know doesn't look like the last two Michaels well, obviously the last two Michaels kind of look similar you know one's a little older than the other two they gave that you know kind of like aging kind of ordeal but they just made him completely different because he didn't want to uh, he didn't want to you know show off his likeness to the franchise because he wanted to he wanted to give exclusive rights to Scarface so so his likeness was given Scarface and uh, there was a guy that did his impression of an impression of an impression and they worked on that and that's another that's another game I can kind of cover it, it was very similar to that series but basically Grand Theft Auto has been uh, borrowing uh, courteously from The Godfather, from Scarface, from the Blues Brothers, from the Warriors, you know, from all those old classics and everything, and you know this, that, yada yada, and, and the old gangster flicks. And that's same thing with Scarface. It was just kind of you know he was just sort of lampooning Cagney and Bogey, and that's why. Like at the very beginning of the movie, they decided, you know what, we're completely ripping off, you know, these classic films. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the main character a big fan of those films. And we're going to, we're going to show them that, you know, we're, you know, we at least care a little bit about those guys. And we're not just, you know, ripping it off, you know, because it's sort of like, you know, it's similar to Annie. So if you think like Annie, like it's very... Very similar to that. I know it doesn't make sense, but like in time, if you know, just sort of put yourself in the mindset of it, and it sort of makes sense. It's it's a it's definitely a um, it's definitely a parody, but you can get the gist of you know what it what it portrays. So, and then lastly, and we got the we got the fourth the fourth Michael. Fourth Michael is he's. He's in the second Godfather game, and and um, I, I've been playing. I've been doing a playthrough of it, you know, just from the from the startup. I know the game from like from like the back of my head to the front. Like like it's just it's muscle memory at this point. It's it's just power. I think it's just powerful stuff. I mean, you know, you got, you got Dominic. He's doing his thing, and it feels like they just sort of, you know duct taped the the old engine of the first couple godfather you know versions of the first game and they just sort of they sort of plaster perished it to uh you know the aesthetic that we got which is it's decent looking obviously they they um they toned down the character creator it was it was a nonsense it was a mess like just whoa why would you do that and the answer is, is because they wanted to tone it down. They wanted it to look more, like, uniform, look more, um, 
it was it's more um you know parody like because they knew that it was you know they have it the first game was absolutely dead set serious and they, they didn't want to do that so they wanted to they wanted to they wanted to they wanted to lampoon uh the the era they wanted to make it more kind of spy thriller kind of that's why the music has changed it became a little bit more kind of jazzy a little bit more bondish a little bit more you know like flint or or uh you know the parody of casino royale which i've i've seen recently it's got a little bit of a you know you get a little bit of orson wells in there you know, he's not in there but you know, you get the the feel for like if if you're watching that a little bit of a charade if you've seen charade if you haven't it's public domain but it's copyrighted but it's not but it's copyrighted but it's not it's a good good flick good good um good emphasis on um it's sort of a, a sort of a flow to it. It's sort of a flow into it that you got, you got it. It's like, it's like when you call someone it, it's not a, it's not an insult. And then they they think of it as an insult, and then you say, why are you calling me it? And then you say, you got it. And then is is there's a lot of people that don't have it, but if you got it, that means we don't. So. You got you know a little bit of leverage on everyone, everything else. So that's kind of what the second game had. You know, it's kind of an it, but it has it. Um, it's and it has this this uh, more mournful Michael. Uh, I think the the third Michael was probably one of my favorite, but the fourth one is just he's so bitter and old and um, angry and 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 full of malice, and, and you know. Like, it's a good portrayal of a Michael, but it's but it's so it's so brutal and that that bitter that anger that it makes it makes Fredo look like a sympathetic character, and they really I really like the way they they paved Fredo's character to just uh, it's it's something else. Um, I, I really feel like he's. He's kind of grown, and they realize, you know, we need to make more, more Fredo, because you know, that's the whole point of the. That's probably the best part of the game is that you get lots and lots of Fredo, and you get one little cool like, like booming, um, like little bass song with the, uh, with the bossa nova playing before before you get to meet, um, you meet Castro, and I I don't I don't get it either because when when they had Castro. You know, they had his likeness, you know, pretty much down to a T. They made him, you know, he's got a really cool beard and stuff. And, you know, it, I think he was even a better Castro than in the film. And I have to go back and watch the film one more time. And um, so that's, you know, that's an issue there. So anyway, um, that's about the gist of it. There's one, two, three, four, four Michaels. Um, that doesn't mean that there's four different godfathers. Now, if you're playing the game, everybody is a mother expletive and godfather. There's just so many of them. It's like, oh, uh, there's this guy, there's Vincenzo. He's he's a godfather in his hometown, and he's Frank Frankie's brother, and, uh, and there's another Frankie, and there's there's four other different. Well, not not different, not godfather godfathers, but there's there's Dons everywhere. It's Dons. It's like a nod to the Dons. It's just everywhere. So you just keep that in mind. It's a good, it's a good series. It's a weird situation that you got four different Michaels in three different films slash game. You know, a couple game adaptations. It's a weird, weird situation that we've uh, must muscle ourselves into. And I just wanted to just sort of clarify all that. And hopefully this this review isn't you know isn't too isn't too in depth or too blah blah blah. Everybody enjoy uh, PB and J to the chat, even though there's no, probably no chat. And I guess I could premiere this and then make like a little fake chat and then just sit there and, and talk into a little thing and and do. I could do it that way. That way. That, that way, you know, I could do the I could do the lame thing and be like. 
Uh, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the chat, and then I could even reply to myself, thanks. But that'd just be, it'd just be weird, so. Have a good one. I don't have an outro, but hopefully the intro is good and it doesn't copy strike me. That was, um, Stan Canton, and it was an adaptation of the song Love for Sale. But actually, come to think of it, as I was listening to it, I couldn't even hear. I couldn't even hear that standard in there. He's got it so, he's got it so, you know, beat up that. All right, we'll, we'll throw it in the outro too. Listen to Love for Sale. PB and J to the chat. Everybody have a wonderful whatnot. Take care.